Hi, my name is Kenny Mack, and welcome to the Fat Furnace Nutrition Program 2014, presented by Empowered Recreation. Um, the Fat Furnace Nutrition Program, here's the four classes and what we'll be covering. Um, today, of course, will be meal planning, breakfast, protein, and cravings. Class two will be sleep, snacks, and supplements, kind of what gives. Class three, I'll be going over the apps, the websites, the gadgets, and the healthy, so those kind of like tech things that can help you out, and then also healthy meals in under 10 minutes. Um, and then class four, planning around temptation, motivation for life, stress and anxiety, laughs and relapse, what now. Kind of the mental game that um, surrounds this whole fat furnace program. All right. Um, so what we're covering today is meal planning and prep, balanced breakfast every day, protein with every meal, and dominating your cravings. So meal planning. Um, I've attached along with this um, video, we've also attached the... Um, Grocery list and big fat list of fat fighting foods for your first for the three weeks of your program. Um, I just like you to scope out that um, what you've been given. Scope out your recipes. See what you want to make out of the recipe book. Um, maybe it's something that's generic that you want to follow along right along with the program, or if you want to make your own kind of um, mix and match, that's fine. Just try to stick to the same ratio of one to one of carbs to protein and um, the diet that we'll be following or like the ratio that we want to eat at is about 40% calor uh, car calories from carbs, 40% calories from protein, and 20% from the healthy fats. So carbs, proteins, and fats. Um, excuse me about that. So attaches the weekly menu, attaches the grocery list. Um, you want to make sure that you've Plan it out for breakfast, lunch, dinner, and snacks. Those snacks are ever important because those are what get you through the times in between uh, where previously you may have ended up um, in a drive through or, or the gas station or something, grabbing something that was undesirable and kind of ruining your, your um, momentum. And then blocking time to prepare. Um, I don't know if you're cooking for a big family. You may have to prepare on two or three different days. Um, if you're cooking just for yourself, one day should be sufficient. Um, just planning out, go to the grocery store. So that should take, you know, 30, 45 minutes. Um, then you've got, I'm sorry, the phone's ringing over here. It's, it's embarrassing. Um, so you're going to block the time, plan for the grocery store, um, plan for your meals. What are you going to make? Build your list. Go to that grocery store and um, come home and prepare it all in one block of time, all just one straight shot. Nice. You're looking at 45 minutes, maybe three hours, as much as three hours, depending on if you're preparing a lot of food. Um, so that's the meal planning portion of this. Um, I really want you to recognize that it takes some time, but you're building a relationship with your food. Um, it's time that you would really spend sitting, waiting at the restaurant or... Maybe not in the not maybe not as fast as the drive-through, but it's better to build a relationship with the food um, and get that working for you. So meal prep, just once you get home, wash all the veggies and fruits immediately after the grocery store. That kind of just makes it makes them ready, rather than you having to, um, you know, like it's easy to grab a bag of chips and rip it open and start eating, but fruit you might not be as apt to just rip into the fruit and start eating because, well, I've still got to prepare it. I've still got to clean it. Um, just beat that by getting it ready as soon as you get home from the grocery store. So get home, prepare your meals for the upcoming week. Families that are larger may need to do this up to three days at a time. Just block appropriately. And then another good thing to do when you're talking about meal preparation is sharing the responsibilities whenever possible. It helps keep you accountable so that you don't end up doing something that isn't exactly healthy for your family um, or for the people that you're preparing the food for. And it also, it's, a, it's fun to share the responsibilities. I remember a lot of the time that I spent with my mom and my family was in the kitchen, um, of course, doing the dishes afterwards, but she taught me a lot about cooking and preparing the food as, as well. And I think that that's a quality time that I'll remember forever. Um, so that's that. Balance breakfast every day. So usually people are missing breakfast. It's usually missed, and here are some of the reasons. It's because um, 
they don't have time. They're waking up, you know, half hour before they got to be to work. Quickly showering, brushing, hopefully brushing their teeth, and slap some deodorant stick on, and you know, hit hit the hit to work. Um, but if it's something that you've got ready the night before, you know, you can boil some eggs or um, Another thing is just, you know, it doesn't take very long to fry an egg. So if you're waking up 15 minutes early to, to make some breakfast for yourself to get yourself moving, if you're, if you're on this path to healthy living, then you'll recognize that the 15 minutes of um, preparation is well worth it compared to, you know, laying around with the bed on your back. Um, those last 15 minutes of hitting the snooze button. Um, not real important in the grand scheme of things. And so getting up and at them and getting, making time for yourself to make those meals, it's worth it. Um, other quick ideas, meal replacement shakes, um, Greek yogurt, that's got a nice protein source, boiled eggs, good protein source, oatmeal, good carb source, okay? It's healthy, but you just want to watch the ratio. Uh, meal replacement shakes, fruit and peanut butter, so apples and peanut butter, bananas and peanut butter. Um, Again, still watching and mindful of your ratio, but these are healthy foods. And then a smoothie. You can prep the greens the night before, you know, have them all washed and have your fruit ready to go. Maybe it's in the freezer. And just throw it all together quickly in the morning. And, you know, with the Nutribullet, it takes less than three minutes, and you've got a delicious breakfast ready to go, maybe even less than two minutes. So um, that's, those are some good ideas to get breakfast in every day. Um, and with, with the balance, what I'm talking about is making sure that you're getting a, a healthy fat, uh, carb, and protein ratio that's about one-to-one. -one. So just as many carbs as you're getting protein. Um, that'll help you feel full and help keep you balanced from um, searching out more carbs throughout the day. Um, protein with every meal. Women especially are very deficient of protein. They are not getting near enough. Um, a lot of our clients... Um, are not even getting like 50 grams per day. Um, it's, a, it's a serious problem. Um, if you want to build a healthy body, you've got to be pumping up your lean muscle mass and burning fat. And um, the protein is what's going to help you build up the lean muscle mass. Some good sources of protein include chicken breasts, turkey, ground turkey, sword, haddock, salmon, tuna, crab, beef, um, steak. So the sirloin is the nice lean cuts. Lean ground beef. Buffalo, eggs, low-fat cheeses, okay? So these are just, those are the non-processed, good, healthier foods, um, good, healthy protein sources. You've got protein shakes as well. Um, you want to, when you're taking a protein shake, you want to seek out one that has a good ratio of protein over carbs. Um, something like 25 to 5 would be outstanding, so a 5 to 1 ratio of protein over carbs. Um, and we want to find that because most of the food that we eat is carbs and or carb loaded, and so we, we're drinking the protein to balance that out. We really want a good high protein to counterbalance the the larger carb intake in most of our other field, um, meals. And so, especially for women, um, just so they can start thinking like, "Oh my gosh, I need more protein." We try to aim for 100 grams every day. Um, Ideally, you're getting 40% of your calories from protein. However, just getting over the 100 grams per day is, is a great start for most people. And then you can continue to build on how you eat from there. But um, take a good look and try to figure out how many calories you're getting. Use a good app like MyFitnessPal or Lose It and see how many, protein, how many grams of protein you're truly getting per day. Um, some of your homework is to keep track of that for a week. Um, and I know you're asking, but Kenny, why? Like, why is it so important? Well, protein with every meal, it'll help maintain lean muscle mass during the exercise, so it helps you exercise better. And it also f facilitates you use of fat as an energy source. So we want to be burning fat rather than protein or um, we, we want to be burning fat so that, of course, we're thinner, trimmer, and um, have more toned body. Um, rather than using our muscles kind of as fuel um, as we exercise. Protein also aids in preserving energy levels during times of healthy calorie reduction. So if you're trying to get your diet under control and you're used to eating 3,500 calories and it's extremely unhealthy how much you eat, um, and you're trying to get that figured out, um, raising the level of protein will help 
keep your energy high as you reduce the total calorie intake. Um, because as you reduce calorie intake, of course, you're naturally going to feel less energetic. But raising the amount of protein can help reduce that um, deficit that you feel. Um, it also helps repair and protect your muscle tissue, which is another reason it's important for fat burn. Okay, so there's some good reasons why protein, um, why you want to get that up. Snacks and dominating cravings. So nuts, cheese sticks, protein bars, shakes. Um, these are just some healthy things that you can do to get, get more snacks in. Those are protein sources there. Fruit and veggies. Um, sleep will also help you curb cravings. I'll talk more about sleep further into the, um, into the fat furnace program. However, for now, just understand that it helps crave your curvings, curb your cravings. Um, sugar, fat, and salt is also another combination you want to be aware of. Um, if you're at the grocery store or the gas station or something and you're looking for potato chips or the french fries or anything like that, it's a, sh it's a deadly combination of sugar, fat, and salt. It's releasing dopamine to the brain that's um, telling you you want more, you want more, you want more. And that's why companies like Lay's can say a tagline like, I bet you can't eat just one. Because they know damn well um, what it's doing to your brain that you really cannot eat just one. So um, sugar, how much is too much? All of your snacks should have less than 15, 16 grams of sugar. Um, and throughout a day, you want to be eating less than 50 grams of sugar. Um, so if any of your drinks or bars or anything like that has more than 15, that's just kind of a lot of sugar, and you want to keep it less than 50 per day. So those are just general guidelines. You may have a specific diet issue or need, but just to get started, follow those guidelines and you'll be on the right track. Um, keeping snacks on hand to beat the drive through. So keeping these snacks, keeping the nuts and the cheese sticks and the protein bars and shakes, the fruit and the veggies, keeping these things like in your car, in your purse, or um, just in your gym bag around, that will be sufficient enough to keep you out of the drive through rather than being like, I am starving, I'm blind with hunger, I can't even think straight, um, I'm just going to grab a quick burger and then I'll eat something healthy later or I'll work out to pay it off or work it off. And that doesn't work. Um, just staying out of the drive through altogether is much better and you can do that by keeping these snacks on hand. Um, try it for a week and see and um, I bet you notice the difference. Um, carb overload versus protein deficiency. This is just really flushing out what I was talking about with making sure that you're getting plenty of protein. Um, I want the protein deficiency. Most of us are getting, you know, only one to every six carbs that we eat. Some people as bad as 30. So 30 to one carbs over protein. Um, it's really a lot. So because we want that balance so that we feel full and so that we're burning optimally. Um, that's why we want to supplement with like protein. So reducing that ratio, whatever it is, maybe it's not as bad as 30 to 1, maybe it's closer to 6 to 1, but we still really want to strive for the 1 to 1. So mindful of that ratio and trying to uh, reduce the carb overload and increase the protein deficiency so that they're more of a balance between carb and protein. That's really one of the main points of this first program, this first class that I want to drive home, is finding that one-to-one -one ratio of carb and protein. And then that should be about 80% of your total caloric intake there. Okay? Any questions on that, please just email me. I know it sounds technical, uh, and believe me, I'm far from a technical person or a coach. Um, I can help you understand it in person or through email. Any questions, just let me know. So your homework is for this week is to block a time, maybe it's an hour and a half, maybe it's as much as three hours, that you're going to establish your grocery list, which you'll see in the resources section um, that came along and attached to this program. And then establish your grocery list, go to the store, get your shopping done, come home, prepare the food, cook the meals, and keep them in uh, glass Tupperwares, so the um, glassware, not plastic, it's just a healthier healthier way to keep your food and get that done you're looking at anywhere from 45 minutes to three hours for that and then number two you want to keep track of the total amount of protein grams that you consume this week um, I mentioned before that especially women come up deficient so really keep track this week 
and then you'll I think you'll find it's very eye-opening to a lot of people um, especially if you're down below 100 grams you really want to improve that so keep track for the week and um, when we get together next week um, we'll have that to discuss all right um, any questions email me at kmac at empoweredrecreation.com I really appreciate your time I hope you found this um, lesson fruitful and good review or good information and I look forward to helping you next week on Fat Furnace number two. Thank you.